look at this map of the 2020 presidential election. Don't you think it's weird that Joe Biden won all these counties in a straight line in the middle of Alabama, one of the most conservative states in America? When I saw this, I thought something nefarious must be going on. Then I did my own research, and what I found was Joe Biden actually won these counties due to an ancient shoreline from 150 million years ago. I'll explain in a minute, but first, I'm your host, Jeff Bell. I'm a two-time middle school geography bee champion and map aficionado. In this video series, we will examine one fascinating map from all 50 states, and you may never look at the USA the same again. And we're gonna start with Alabama and go in alphabetical order the way God intended. You're watching Planet Bell. During the Cretaceous period, about 145 to 165 million years ago, dinosaurs roamed the Earth, and the central plains and southeast lowlands of what is now North America were covered in a vast ocean. Over millions of years, plankton left behind tiny shells rich in calcium carbonate that accumulated along the shores, forming a chalky limestone layer full of fossils. When the water receded, it left behind a nearly impermeable layer of chalk in a swath of land in Alabama and Mississippi, which we call the Black Belt. Trees grew all over the southeast, but due to the hard limestone bedrock, only grasslands formed in the marshy black belt. Over millions of years, decomposing grasses created a swath of exceptionally nutrient-rich, dark soil, which gives the region its name. In the 1820s and 30s, settlers began cultivating the grasslands, which became some of the most valuable farmland on Earth. Wealthy landowners constructed a network of cotton plantations in the black belt, and imported enslaved Africans to work in the fields. Even today, you can see the Black Belt from space. It's an area of cultivated land surrounded mostly by forests. The region became one of the nation's richest and most politically powerful, and the cotton trade elevated Montgomery, Selma, and Demopolis into some of the most affluent towns in the country. In fact, Montgomery was the first capital of the Confederacy. After the Civil War, many formerly enslaved people stayed in the area to work as sharecroppers or farmers or work in the local communities. Over the years, advances in machinery made the farms less reliant on manual labor, the soil became less productive, and many black people moved north to industrial centers. Despite this exodus, these counties in central Alabama remained majority black. In fact, social scientists use the term black belt to not only describe the nutrient-rich crescent of land, but also the demographics of the larger region, stretching from Texas to Virginia, with a high concentration of African Americans. Alabama's Black Belt then became the center of the civil rights movement in the 1950s and 60s. On December 1, 1955, Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat to a white passenger, and her arrest sparked the Montgomery bus boycott that lasted 13 months and ended with the Supreme Court ruling that bus segregation was unconstitutional. Ten years later, three marches from Selma to Montgomery through the heart of the Black Belt became a watershed moment that led to the passage of the Voting Rights Act. President Lyndon Baines Johnson, a Democrat from Texas, signed the Voting Rights Act into law on August 6, 1965, little more than a year after signing the landmark Civil Rights Act. I am about to sign into law the Civil Rights Act of 1964. This, in part, sparked a massive realignment in American politics. After signing the Civil Rights Act, over 90% of blacks voted for Johnson in 1964, but he lost most of the southern states, as white voters shifted to the Republican Party. In 1968, former Alabama Governor George Wallace ran for president with the American Independent Party on a platform of racial segregation. And I say segregation now, segregation tomorrow, and segregation forever. And his message was popular, as he won five states in the Deep South. Ever since, the South has leaned Republican, and blacks overwhelmingly support the Democratic Party. And that brings us back to our fascinating map of Alabama. In 2020, Joe Biden won an estimated 90% of the black vote nationwide, and this massive support allowed him to win the counties of Alabama's black belt, partly due to an ancient shoreline, the tragedy of slavery, and the civil rights movement. Who knew an election map could tell us so much? In our next episode, we will go north to Alaska, where I lived for 14 years, and look at this non-controversial, yet very fascinating map of the Alaska Marine Highway System.